The baby in the picture is suffering from what's known as hutchinson Guilford progeria syndrome, which is an extremely rare and progressive genetic condition that produces rapid aging in children. The average life expectancy of the children with the syndrome is known to be 13 years old. In individuals with this syndrome, cardiovascular diseases such as heart failure or strokes are most common disease, uh, causes of death in the teenage years. As you can see from the picture, the individuals with the uh, disease display very characteristic facial features including the eyes. And the most common ocular manifestations are the prominent eyes, loss of eyebrows and eyelashes, and lack of thalmos, which is the inability to close the eyelids completely. Unfortunately, there is no cure for progeria at the moment, but research for treatment is ongoing. As a part of the uh, ongoing effort, a clinical study in 2012 examined the effect of treatment with a drug called Lorna Farnip on a number of physiological outcomes. Among those outcomes, the researchers measured what's called the pulse wave velocity of 18 children diagnosed with the syndrome. PWV is often used as a measure of vascular stiffness, which is an important factor in cardiovascular health, and it is known that this outcome measure is abnormally high in children with a syndrome. So the objective of the study was to test the effect of the drug in slowing down the outcome measure called PWV. To that end, 18 children with progeria were recruited and their PWVs were measured at baseline first. Then they received a daily dose of the drug for two years and their PWVs were measured again. So the million dollar question here is to see if on average their treated PWVs were reduced from the baseline measurement when they are um, compared. So in this case, the mode of comparison here is the within subject comparison because the PWV measurements before and after for each patient are paired measurements in that those measurements are collected from the same patient and they're compared within the same patient. Therefore, we will use a t-test called paired samples t-test accordingly. Before we see the data, we need to set up a pair of hypotheses as usual. So here the null represents no effect or change in the population mean difference. So the average difference between the PW at baseline and after treatment will be more or less zero, right? So this is how we're going to write it. So the population mean of PWV base line and PWV treated. should be more or less zero so there should be no difference um, which will be regarded as a negative evidence of the drug on the other hand the mean difference between the pwb um, uh, pwbs should be different to claim that the drug is effective so the mean PWB should be different from zero, at least statistically. And 
So this is a two-tailed hypothesis, but more specifically, the difference should be in the reduction of the treated PWB compared to the baseline PWB, right? Not the other way around. So, I mean, the two-tailed test will tell you uh, which way uh, the outcome uh, is, um, you know, directed. But in one-tailed fashion, we can say that P. Uh, oh. PWV baseline minus PWV treated should be what? Should be positive, right? Because it is expected that the PWV at baseline are much faster than they are uh, after they are treated so these are the two pairs of hypotheses so the bottom one is one tailed alternative hypothesis whereas the top one here is two tailed alternative hypothesis so this is the sample of pwb data collected before and after the treatment from the 18 patients Please note that the unit of the outcome measure PWV is meters per second. Now, let's run the uh, descriptive statistics and the pair samples t-test using Jamovi. So, this is the data copied from the slide. Um, unfortunately, you have to actually manually type this data into Jamovi. Um, as there is no Excel file to um, follow what I'm doing. So if you haven't done so, please stop the video and um, have the data um, into Jamovi. So unlike the independent samples t-test, we do not have um, you know, groups to be distinguished. So what you do in pair samples uh, t-test you just type all the data into all the data from the baseline condition in one column and type enter the um, the data from treated condition in a separate column because you know <clears throat> this baseline and treated data are paired if it is on the same row right so you do not have the separate grouping variable uh, but you only have a two different variables. And then the number of rows should match between these two columns, right? Because they are paired. So let's just take a look at, you know, how we run this pair sample t-test. by Clicking t-test and go to pair samples t-test. All right, so as a we need descriptives and we also need descriptive plots which will be just side by side 95 percent confidence interval and the mean difference and we like to have the 95 percent confidence interval too and we're going to just um, leave this a two-tailed hypothesis testing as default and for pair sample t-test you need to check the normality of the difference score, the difference between baseline and treated. So you to uh, tick this box to check the assumption. So now uh, you can move baseline first and then treat it to make it paired, or you can click baseline, hold down shift, and then left mouse click to select both and move together. I mean, that's just a basically the uh, same, but and there are you know different ways to move paired variables. All right, so let's take a look at the descriptive statistics. And um, so the mean baseline 
PWB is 12.4, whereas the mean PWB B4 treated is 8.5. Um, looks like there's a more variability in baseline compared to treated, um, but that is not really relevant in this case because we're going to, we only need to take a look at the difference between these two and the associated standard deviation of that difference, not the individual um, PWV conditions on average. And we're going to talk about this uh, in more detail later on um, but you know this is not really right um, representation of 95 percent confidence interval for pair samples okay so uh, you know i think other statistical software including jamovi or you know spss they assumed uh, they assumed that these two conditions are independent and these, this side-by-side 95% -side confidence interval error bar is made um, based upon the assumption that they are independent, which is not really correct for the uh, pair samples. So we will talk uh, about this in more detail later on. So it looks like there is uh, some difference between these means. But before we look at the parasample t-test result, we want to take a look at the normality test result. The Shapiro Wilk. So um, baseline minus treated, you have W statistics and the associated p-value, which is 0.16. So uh, when you compare this against alpha 0.05, that means we, because the p-value is greater than alpha 0.05, that means we fail to reject the null of no difference. In other words, uh, the difference data set is not statistically different from normal distribution. So more or less normally distributed. So now we can take a look at the pair samples t-test result. So the order of subtraction goes like this, baseline minus treated. So this order of subtraction is very important, right? So um, depending upon the order of subtraction, we will get either positive statistics or negative statistics. And you want to make sure that the sign actually goes um, well with the, uh, the order of subtraction. So we assume that the baseline should be larger than the treated, right? So it is expected that the drug should reduce the treated PWB against baseline. So this is large, this is small. So if you subtract small from large, then you should get positive value, right? If you have negative value, then there is something wrong. So you always have to make sure that if the outcome statistics that the, the result is in the right direction always so it is in the right direction at least because we have positive statistics and mean difference is also positive it should be and the degrees of freedom is 17 so for pair sample t test the degrees of freedom is n minus 1 so here the n is the number of pairs it, in our case, it's 18 pairs, so 18 minus 1 should be 17, and P is quite small, um, so it's way less than 0.05. That means this mean difference is statistically significant. So this is a mean difference, and the 95% confidence interval around this mean difference is this. The lower boundary is 2.6, and upper boundary is 5.2, and 3.9 should be somewhere in the middle, right? And because uh, the uh, both boundaries of 95% confidence interval um, are positive, we know that this difference is positively um, significant in terms of statistics right so the mean difference is a positively great meaning so that that is actually a supporting evidence uh for the alternative hypothesis 
we expected that the drug should reduce uh, the PWV of the patients. So uh, we can say that uh, the drug is effective, at least statistically speaking. 다른어이피리멤버워라이셋어바티어웨딘서브젝트디자인컴페어투더비트윈서브젝트디자인비포어이셋다더어웨딘서브젝트컴페리션어더웨딘서브젝트디자인이스포스트비모어센서티브투파인더디프런스비커즈더그룹스어컨디션스비컴페어인웨딘서브젝트디자인어레이티드 So each individual in each condition, they um, act as their own control. So in effect, the subject to subject variability is supposed to be minimized in theory for pair samples design. In other words, uh, within subject design should reduce the ex uh, should reduce the extra amount of between subject variations. Present in individual subjects across the conditions being compared, namely baseline and treated in this case. So the design should give us more sensitivity in the data, which typically results in a small error bar compared to the between subject design. But unfortunately, this is not done automatically by many statistical software, including Jamovi. So we need to take this. Uh, take this into account by adjusting the extra variability manually, which was first suggested by Loftus and Mason in 1994. So let's see how we can do this in Jamovi. Now we're back to Jamovi and let's see how we can adjust the size of these 95% uh, confidence interval according to the uh, pair samples. So let's go back to data. And then the first thing you need to do is to create, create a, an average column between baseline and treated. So click on C and then it should be new computed variable. Okay, so it just moved to yeah, I'll just delete this. And then I'll just name it as average. And it should be the average between these two columns. So baseline plus treated divided by two will give you the average column. Now that you have this average column created, you want to have average of the average, which is the grand average, right? So just get the descriptive of the average column. All you need is mean. Remove average to the variable to get the average. It's a 10 point or a six, so that is a grand average. Now you go back to data and create another computed variable to subtract the average from the grand average. Or a six minus, so the O. Oh. So this is adjustment. So here the idea is that you would like to actually adjust the amount of variability um, that is common to both um, conditions, baseline and treated, because this is paired. So the, the variability um, created in this graph is actually overrated, um, is overestimated. So you'd like to actually make the um, appropriate adjustment. Um, so here you subtract the average column from the grand average. So that's average. You do that. And then these 
numbers represents the amount of adjustment uh, should be applied to each baseline in treated condition. So let's start with oops um, the uh, baseline adjustment. So all you have to do is to adjust it baseline to move baseline and add the adjustment to make the adjusted baseline EWV and you do the same for um, treated <clears throat> so you add the adjustment to the treated columns. Right. So this is it. Now you can replot the side by side ninety five percent confidence interval by using these two columns. So these columns are created only for the um, visualization purposes okay you are not running the pair samples t test on these adjusted values you should use original scores to test the uh, the pair samples to run the pair sample t test not on these two columns okay you only use these two columns to create new uh, side by side 95 percent confidence interval now we go back to analysis t test pair samples t test now because we already run the t test we don't need that all we need is just a descriptive plot right and you move these two the last two adjusted values together to the right pane and then here we have newly created side-by-side 95% -side confidence interval and see if you can if you compare these two uh, there is obvious difference actually created right so here I put them side by side so the left one is what Jamovi automatically created as if these two conditions are independent and the right one um, is after we adjusted the error bars taking account into the design component so as you can see we have a lot more separation between uh, these uh, two error bars on the right and also the size of the error bar decreases um, which is supposedly closer to the true difference between the pair samples and even though uh, our column headings in Jamovi says adjusted baseline and adjusted treated you will present this as just a baseline and treated so um, you do not have to use the adjusted namings because um, these are the correct error bars for each condition so this is basically how you create a within subject error bar using Jamovi. So make sure that you um, do this when you have pair sampled, um, pair sampled, and then if you ran the pair samples t test to compare the difference.